Welcome back to Great Day Houston. Our next guest left behind a life in Hollywood to help transform the criminal justice system. Here to explain what she's doing to help advocate for treatment courts in America is Melissa Fitzgerald. Also joining her is Carlos Gonzalez, a drug court graduate. Good morning. Good morning, Deborah. Good morning. All right. Um, what you were doing is, is prevalent here in Houston as well. And Absolutely. I remember the debate that went on for years is that we kept arresting people who were drug addicts and throwing them in jail. And what was the purpose? They would get right back out and go back to the same lifestyle. And so explain to folks what that whole idea of drug court is. Well, drug court combines public health and public safety. And of course, there are people who belong behind bars. Mm -hmm. But many who are dealing with a substance use disorder or mental health condition are much better served by getting treatment. Otherwise, you have the revolving door, revolving door, revolving, and you're doing Absolutely. nothing. Absolutely. And what's exciting is treatment court graduates, 75% of them never see another pair of handcuffs again. Mm. So they enter into a drug treatment court program, a veterans treatment court program, a DWI court program, one of the modalities of the treatment court programs, and they get treatment as well as a accountability so that they can get their lives back, return to our communities as healthy citizens, people like Carlos, yeah. who graduated yeah. from a treatment court program. And Carlos, you are proof that anyone can can succeed, right, if they're yeah. given a chance. You. Uh, your life was kind of, it had spun out of control. There was alcohol, the heroin, there was drug abuse, you were running away from the law. Yeah. And so at what point, and I'm sure there were several times, I know it, friends of mine who have been addicts, there were several points in their life where they, they were kind of brought to their knees and they thought, I can't do this anymore. I can't do this anymore. What was your moment when you said, I cannot live this way anymore? I'm going to live or I'm going to die? I was, uh, I was in jail on a probation violation and I was, uh, had many warrants out for my arrest and when they had put me in jail, all the warrants came out. Mm -hmm. And I was facing 25 years in prison and I would have done a mandatory 18 and a half. Yeah. And as I was going back and forth to court and waiting to go to prison, my mom found out about drug court never heard of it before and she begged them to accept me because she was sure 18 years in prison yeah. I would be done and still that 18 left. years in prison wouldn't mean that you're dealing with the things that they led you into that life nope. right and so when you heard that you must have thought this is too good to be true to have this option of, of drug treatment court I thought it was way too good to be true <laughs> and I didn't think I would make it because I'd never been sober for any real amount of time in my life right. um, but what drug court did for me was it taught me to be accountable to be grateful and to give back to my community. A true rehabilitation program. Yeah. You know, and oftentimes when we think of rehab, people say, okay, well you detox, now you're good. Yeah. That, that's no. like, now the hard work begins. And you have skills and tools that help you succeed, setting up our participants for success in their communities. And one thing I just want to say about Carlos is, if Carlos hadn't been in a treatment court program, he would still be behind bars today. Correct. And instead, yeah. Carlos is a counselor, and he is saving lives in his community every single day in the very same drug court that yes. saved his yeah. life. I was saying, like, you know, we were talking earlier, I always say this on the show, that sometimes you don't choose your mission, your mission yes. chooses you. Yeah. The mission and chose me. Yeah, what better person that when someone says to you how they feel lost, I work a lot with, with, with um, former addicts and, and, and people in recovery, and it's like they, when they say they feel lost, they feel like they can't do it you can look them right in the eye and say I've been there yeah and you can do it yeah. that one of the beauties of, of being a counselor now is that when they do talk to me I can say I do understand how you feel yeah and I can help them there. talk through that and I've and been when they there. feel hopeless and, and you can... one of the things that's always been missing sometimes that I found in the, the treatment that I've gone to is that they don't understand they haven't been an addict not to put them down yeah. but when you have that well that, they know not the life experience they know from right. academic experience they, what to academic. do but you're right when, when the life experience because I think even a thing of feeling shame because right. a lot of what yeah. drug addicts have to do to get the drugs there's a lot of shame and guilt associated but you can look at them and say I know and yeah. Yeah. lift that, get rid of that. We gotta set that aside, get rid of that. Right? And I think what's exciting about these treatment court programs is the courtroom is a place of accountability at the, in these treatment courts mm -hmm. and strict accountability, but they're also places of hope and healing right. and they are really special. And what's exciting is that, you know, you have incredible individual stories, but treatment courts serve 
over 150,000 people a year. There are yeah. over 3,000 treatment courts nationwide, and over one and a half million lives have been saved through treatment yeah. courts across the country. And it saves lives, but not just the individual, but their family and their community. And then additionally, well, it's the ripple effect for sure. Yeah, huge. yeah. And I know Judge Bonnie Hellams here. I think every person who's in trouble does not want to face a judge, right? But I gotta say, what's cool about it is that in the in the drug treatment court, while they were stern, they were people who had compassion. These judges Absolutely. have compassion. They understand. They've seen the stories, you know. And so uh, their their whole goal is to help you thrive and survive. But very beautifully put. <laughs> and the other thing about Texas, which is exciting, is in 2007, Texas made an investment in treatment courts, in drug treatment courts. Yes. And the result in Texas was they closed three prisons, saved the taxpayer billions of dollars, and reduced crime. Yeah. And I think that is a story that it gets told across this country. Treatment courts work. They are saving lives, they are saving money, and they are restoring valuable, valuable yeah. citizens to our communities. How can we help? People can go on to allrise.org, sign up for our our emails, mm -hmm. sign up when we have, you know, when, when we say, uh, you know, a, send out an alert to, to call and email your elected official to support treatment courts. Yeah. Make sure there's one in your community. Texas is doing great. Houston's doing great. Um, and and go on to allrise.org. Yeah. Because what we say is, you know, in a courtroom, when a judge enters, they say all rise. Yes. But in a treatment court, it takes on an even deeper meaning. Absolutely. Because when one person rises out of addiction and struggling with mental health disorders, we all and rise. And then reaches back and helps the next That's person. Right. All right, Melissa, of course, we knew you on the West Wing playing yes. Allison Janney's assistant, but also this cause to you is something that's kind of in your blood. Your dad was a judge. <laughs> yes. My dad was a judge who started a mental health court in Pennsylvania many years ago. He's been a, a believer in these courts, you know, as far as I can remember. Yeah. And then Martin Sheen has been a drug court champion for over 25 years. So between the two of them, <laughs> yeah. um, I really, uh, you know, my heart was open to it. And then I also got involved in veterans treatment courts um, because I produced a documentary on, right. on and veterans. Mental health is a big issue there yeah. as well. What do you say to that person at home right now who's looking, who feels hopeless, feels helpless, what do you say to them? And they've got warrants out for their arrest out there as well. Don't give up. Don't ever give up. Don't ever give up on yourself. Don't stop trying. My mom told me, don't stop trying and never stop trying. Here I am. Yeah, as long as you're alive, you have the power to do something about you your situation. You can always change. Yeah, yeah. you, you too. Thank change. you very, very much. And for more Thank information you. on Justice for Vets and the NADCP, we have a link on our site, greatdayhouston.com, and the NADCP stands for the National Association of Drug Court Professionals. Again, we have a very vibrant drug court treatment program right here in our city. If you know someone is struggling, let them know what they can do to get the warrants off their back and then start living the life that they are intended to live. Thank you all very much for joining us. Have a great day, everybody.